days that we never learned. We had been tortured and imprisoned for so long, we didn't know what life was without it anymore. We had not felt ourselves changed, but gradually we had become so accustomed to such monstrosities that now that we were free, we felt drawn to them. Consider the leeches as an example. Many of us have made peace with our little blood-sucking companions so long ago that we continue to apply leeches to ourselves and to each other, even though we don't have to anymore. They are our friends, after all, for they have been prisoners too, abducted from their natural habitats, just as we were. They have names and voices, and they must be fed. All of the cruelty has gone out of it, but we bind each other in manacles and straight waistcoats and perform imaginary operations on one another. It has become a game to us. We hold contests to see who can get out of their restraint the quickest. We took the wheeled metal beds from the bloodletting wing and now have bed races down the corridors. We have found a thousand uses for the instruments of our torture, claiming them as our own and reclaiming ourselves in the process. The plague rats remain a part of everything we do, with Sir Edward always keeping his protective eye over us, though he does disappear now and then, just as he had often done these past years, but we always know that he will soon be back. The rats sit with us at tea, drinking from our cups, nibbling the crumpets and scones and tea cakes, for we have such things now. In fact, we have every material thing that we could wish for, and more besides. Under the asylum's old regime, our tyrant jailers had absconded our belongings immediately upon our arrival. And they sold some of our goods and spent some of our money, but there still remained rooms filled with treasures amassed over the years. More than we needed to live as frivolously as we pleased for the rest of our days. Of course, I had arrived with no belongings, but many of the girls had been deposited here by wealthy families who, convinced by their own ignorance, in addition to the pressures of society's ignorance that their words were mad, left them, but not without full purses, having been given to think that the girls would be well cared for, and better cared for, the more valuables they brought with them. We have between us girls of every conceivable talent, from cooks and bakers who craft the most exquisite creations from pastry and sponge sugar and enable us to have high tea at both four o'clock in the afternoon and four o'clock in the morning, to master musicians of whom I am proud to count myself amongst and keep our extraordinary household supplied with music, for there is always music. And Juhi and I play our Mozart duets until dawn for royalty, as we always said we would. For we are the kings and the queens, and this is our territory. Of course, that is far from the end. But for that, you'll have to get the book, which is bigger than I am. Thank you very, very much for listening. Shine in my direction 